Okay, so now we're going to get a little more advanced and we're going to start jumping into some Espresso work because what we want to do is we want to set up some custom controllers and custom buttons so that we can actually keyframe those buttons in order to activate the gun to turn it on and then to keyframe it again to turn it off. Otherwise, what we would have to do to get these barrels to spin is we would have to come over here to the cloner object and we would have to continually keyframe the I believe it's the offset yeah in order to get these barrels to spin we need to keyframe the offset now that's we you know we could do that um, it's it's not really a problem however working with the MoGraph cloner it's just going to create some extra espresso work for us to do and I want to try to keep things as simple as possible so what I'm going to do is take the cloner object and I'm going to make it editable now this gives us a null with all of our barrels in there and we can actually name this here to barrels okay so now all we need to do is take the tip because the tip and this middle cylinder they are going to be rotating with the gun so what we need to do is find those that's going to be the mid cylinder and the tip we need to put those in the barrel null as well and now when we grab hold of that null and we rotate it in the B value which is for banking now that whole assembly will spin now right offhand I see a little bit of a problem here and that is these uh, barrels are going into a flat slate of metal here so we need to clean that up and make a hole so let's go into polygon mode on this main body and I'm just going to select those polygons and extrude them inward with the extrude inner tool and then I'm just going to pull those in like so and then just to kind of make things look a little better I'm going to go to line mode and I'm going to bevel that inside line just so it's not so sharp like that now those barrels need to be lengthened so we'll just go to point mode grab our live selection rectangle tool be sure that only select visible elements is off and we need to select all six of those barrels and we just want to click and drag here because we want to grab all of the points on the end of that bar on those six barrels and then we just want to pull them down like so okay so now we've run into a slight issue here and I'm glad it kind of happened that way it'll give me a chance to explain it and what happened here is when we grab those points so I'm just gonna go back and grab them again what happened is if we go to a side view if you notice that the barrel is slightly angled upward it's actually pointing kind of up but this handle here for these points is actually not angled up in the z-axis it's actually straight and if we were to take these points and pull them around you see how the barrel how these points don't actually follow and stay in line with the gun itself they kind of move around and distort the barrels a little bit so let's do a couple of undos and I want to get it back to where those points are back where they originally were okay now what's happening here is we need to change the selection uh, axis here so with all of those points selected we need to go back to our tool here just click the tool that will bring up the options here for it and we want to go into the modeling axis tab and it's gonna say axis and orientation so what we could do here is for axis we want to say selected and the orientation let's change that to object and instantly now that 
uh, axis handle here is now rotated and pitched over slightly to stay in line with those barrels and now when we move it now it's no longer distorting and it's staying in line with those barrels so now we can take those barrels and push them down where they need to go okay so now when we rotate that main barrel null for the B value here now we get the gun to spin and it looks correct okay so now what we want to do is set up a controller with a button that all we have to do is click the button and the gun will turn off and we uncheck the button and the gun will turn on so to do that this is where we're going to need to jump into some espresso work so the first thing we want to do is since we're going to be dealing with the barrels here we can just right click on the barrel and go to cinema 40 tags espresso now more than likely your espresso editor is going to pop up in its own separate window well, all I did was I just docked it here into uh, a tab that way I can go between the view and the editor here and I can just go back and forth by clicking here on the tabs however um, you know yours is probably going to come up in its own separate window so just keep track of it because if you minimize it it will usually rest along down here along the bottom somewhere so we're going to be going back and forth between the two so the first thing we want to do is take the barrel object and bring it in and now we have a node here for the barrel and on the import side what we want to do is we want to go to coordinates rotation rotation B because rotation B is the rotation here that's going to be used to spin the barrel so we'll go back to the espresso editor and what we want to do is set up a controller so that we can define turning the barrel on and off now we could make a button that turns it on and turns it off like I talked about earlier but in real life a minigun spinning it's going to instantly start spinning as soon as you pull the trigger but as soon as you release the trigger I don't know of any minigun that actually stops and has a break and just stops instantaneously and has no spin down so in real life a minigun once it's done firing it's actually going to take a second to spin down before it stops so what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom controller that we can keyframe to instantly come on and then we'll just gradually bring it down over a period of maybe 30 frames or so in order to get it to stop spinning that way it looks a little more realistic and it just doesn't instantly come on and then just instantly stop okay so what we want to do now is create the controller that's going to be used to determine the speed in which the barrels are going to spin so we could do this by creating another null object and then linking some user data to that but I usually like to just keep everything here uh, with the same espresso tag and then we can later just take those uh, sliders and these value controllers that we're going to make and we can actually just drag those into the viewport where they're always there we can get to them and it's a, a little handier that way just to do it so what I'm going to do is click on the barrel object here for the barrels and I'm going to go to user data add user data and we're going to create our own custom controller here and what I want to do for the name is I'm going to call this barrel speed that's going to be the name and the data type is going to be float the interface is also going to be float and the unit we're going to set to real so now what we have here is a minimum and maximum value we'll just leave the step at one but the minimum and maximum value are going to determine the rotational steps or the rotational periods of the gun and the barrels every second so what that means is since we're dealing with a scene here that's going to be 30 frames per second the minimum value is going to be zero that means whenever this controller is set to zero the gun is not moving the barrels are stopped but the maximum value will determine how fast the barrels are going to rotate and make a complete 360 degree rotation per 30 frames or in one second so there's really no need to go get real crazy with this because I know many guns spin very very fast 
but since we're working with 3D and we're going to be applying our you can apply motion blur to the barrels to blur it all we need is a fast enough speed just to get some really good blur to make it look as though they're spinning really really fast when actually they really aren't so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value to say let's do something like maybe 360 degrees times 2 720 okay so we'll just leave it at 720 which means it's going to rotate in one 30 in in 30 frames which is one second long it's going to rotate and make 100 it's going to make a 360 degree turn twice in one second which should be plenty for what we need so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and now I'm going to take that barrel object because we need to get the user data out of it and you notice here when you click on the user data for the barrels now our barrel speed controller comes up that we just created so now we need to take the barrel, bring it in over to the left hand side and on the output port here we need to go to user data so we'll select user data barrel speed and now we have a barrel speed output port from our controller. Now what we need to do is add a time node and we need to introduce some time into our Expresso equations here so let's go to uh, right click and go new node expresso and we want to go to the general and go down to time now by default it comes in with a time output port so we just want to right click on that and click delete and what we want is a real output port so click there on your output on the red square there and just choose real so now we've got our controller, we've got some time, we've got our barrels, now we need to start linking these things up but before we do we need to introduce a math node in here so we're going to go right click new node expresso calculate math and we want to set this here to uh, its current function is set to add and we just want to change this here to multiply and the way this multiply node works if you click on it you'll notice that you have two inputs here input one and input two which is the first one here is one the second one is two and the way this works is it takes input one multiplies it by input two and then gives you an output of the uh, multiplication between the two so we want to take real here and this real output port we want to connect that to the first input for the math node now one thing that we need to do here is if we suddenly just connect this barrel speed to the second input we're gonna have some problems the problem here with this is that Cinema 4D expects all rotational values to be defined as radians and a radian is a circular type of measure but we don't what we want to do is we want to define a speed of the rotation of these barrels in a degrees per second which means that we have to now convert all of our rotational values coming from the uh, coming from the barrel speed controller here and we need to convert those values to radians before we actually pass them along to the multiply node so what we have to do is go to new node expresso calculate degree and what we want to do is we want to change the function from radians to degree and we want to change that to degree to radians and now we can connect the barrel speed to the input and the output of this degree node goes to the second input of the multiply math node and now we can take the output port from the multiply node to the rotational B value of the input port for the barrels so now we'll go back to view and we'll go click on our barrel speed controller here which is click on barrels go to user data and I'm going to lengthen my timeline here to something like maybe 500 frames and I'm going to hit play and I'm going to slowly start moving this up and now you can see it's starting to move so let's take this to something like 360 degrees and now our barrel is instantly starting to turn for us and we'll take it up to the maximum which was 720 and there you go 
So now all we have to do is keyframe our user data here for the barrel speed. So I'll take that back to zero. And what we can do here is we can actually take this barrel speed controller and to make it easier to get to, we can just click it and drag and place it up here in the viewport out of the way somewhere. And now all we have to do to keyframe it is just to control click the little dot to keyframe it. And we can type in our value here and then make the keyframe for it. Now if we deselect the barrel, you can see that the controller went away. So we need to click the barrel object again, right click on this controller and click show always. Now when we deselect the barrel, that controller will always be there and it'll just make it easier to get to it instead of actually having to go through here and select the barrel you know and if you're not on the user data tab then you have to go to it and select it it's just a whole lot easier just to select this controller up here in the viewport okay so now we've created our custom user data controller here to control the rotational speed of the gun and uh, what we're going to do next is set up uh, a custom controller with a button in order to click to keyframe it for our muzzle flash but I see that I'm coming up here now I'm getting close to 20 minutes again and it's probably going to take another 10 or 15 minutes to set this up so I'm going to go ahead and stop this one and we will continue in the next lesson with setting up the custom controller for the muzzle flash